I can't really describe the level of anger that I was feeling when I when I first saw this. I'll, I'll be honest here. This is an interview at Harvard at the uh, Harvard's uh, Kennedy School. Jared Kushner, uh, who, as you know, is Donald Trump's son-in-law, but also uh, was a special advisor to the president, worked on for, I guess it was like 15 minutes at the beginning of the uh, term, uh, the uh, uh, Trump's uh, term, solving the Israel-Palestine crisis. That's where it started out. Then it just moved on to him um, making a deal with the Saudis to finance his um, uh, buildings and debt and then also to deliver to the Saudis um, a framework for a mutual recognition with Israel, which ultimately sidelined any of the Palestinian interests. And uh, many scholars uh, and experts believe that was at least um, a significant part of the motivation for Hamas's attack on October 7th. Didn't even gesture at the Palestinians, just pretended they didn't exist. Just pretended they didn't exist and uh, hoping that they would eventually just go away. Here uh, in this interview from February 15th, um, from a video that was posted to YouTube by the Middle East Initiative at Harvard, uh, here he is expressing um, a similar sentiment uh, about them just going away. Syria, when there's refugees, Turkey took them, Europe took them, mm -hmm. Jordan took them. For whatever reason, here in Gaza, there's refugees from the fighting, from an offensive uh, attack that was staged from Gaza. Israel's going in to do, um, you know, a long-term deterrence mission. And it's just, it, it's unfortunate that nobody's taking the refugees. But also there are real fears on the part of Arabs, and I'm sure you talk to a lot of them, who think once Gazans leave Gaza, Netanyahu's never going to let them back in. Um, maybe, but I'm not sure there's much left of Gaza at this point. So, you know, if you think about even the construct, like, you know, Gaza, Gaza was not really a historical precedent, right? It was the result of, of a war, right? You had tribes that were in different places, but then Gaza became a thing. Uh, Egypt, you know, used to run it. And then, you know, over time, you had different governments that came in different ways. All right, I'm so sorry. Pause it for war. a sec, because we just have to unpack some of this. So when he said there's no historical precedent, that's fairly incoherent. But what he means there is that... We could transfer them to another place like Gaza. It just kind of create was created by the Israeli government as an open air prison to how these house these people as, as their land was stolen. Like they could go somewhere else and he'll get into that in a second. But how cavalierly he says, I'm not sure there's much left of Gaza at this point. Yeah, that's the problem. That's the genocide that's unfolding. Right. And just also uh, to make something clear that like, first off, uh, the existence of Gaza and people living there ancient precedes the existence of the nation of Israel, we you know, should just say. You know who like, also it, precedes the nation of Israel? Joe Biden, older than the state of Israel, okay? Gaza is mentioned in like, I mean... Uh, Samson takes place in Gaza, <laughs> the, the story of Samson. Like, I mean, what are we talking about? It's a, a recent invention or whatever he said. But, I mean, again, like, what, what kind of precedent do you need uh, to justify the fact that people live there and then have been now living there for 70 years because uh, they were, that was where they went when they became refugees because of their being pushed out of the... Um, the other parts of uh, of Palestine, which ultimately became Israel, uh, I mean, psychopath. But uh, go back a little bit, and so we can bask in this. Right, you had tribes that were in different places, but then Gaza became a thing. Uh, Egypt, you know, used to run it, and then you know, over time, you had different governments that came in different ways. So you have another war. You know, usually when wars happen, um, you know, borders are changed historically over time. And so my sense is, is I would say, how do we deal with the terror threat that is there so that it cannot be a threat to Israel or to Egypt, right? I think that both sides are spending a fortune on military. I think neither side uh, really wants to have, you know, a terrorist organization enclaved right between them. I mean, Gaza's waterfront property, it could be uh, very valuable to, uh, if people would focus on kind of building up, uh, you know, livelihoods. You think about all the money that's well, going into this tunnel network. You, you notice, like, he at least had the tiny, tiny modicum of self-awareness when he said it could be valuable to 
and then yeah. shifted when he realized like oh wait a second I don't want to uh, give up uh, uh, my business plan. This is the uh, quiet part out loud. The, this is this what is widely thing. understood, but not supposed to be said out loud, Jared. It's, it, it, you know, and he realized like, oh, wait a second. I just revealed my PowerPoint. Go back a little bit so that we can hear that again. I mean, this is, um, I, none of this should be in any way surprising, but what is the, the think of the level of, uh, I mean, how much of a sociopath you would have to be. I can understand people conceiving of this. Like, I can understand people robbing a bank, but announcing that you're robbing a bank, live streaming that you're, you're robbing a bank. Brandy, and this is, money. this, of course, is even more horrific because of the actual sort of like uh, death and, um, and suffering that's being created. But this guy is so oblivious, uh, so sociopathic that... He's actually saying this stuff out loud at this time, uh, like, like the flesh of the children that uh, he wants to build his luxury developments on hasn't even fully decomposed off of the bones. So he's not just building well, doesn't want to just build this uh, his real estate development on their skeletons, but on their literal corpses at this point. I think neither side uh, really wants to have, you know, a terrorist organization enclave right between them. I mean, Gaza's waterfront property, it could be uh, very valuable to uh, if people would focus on kind of building up, to, uh, you know, livelihoods. You think about all the money that's gone into this tunnel network and into all the munitions, if that would have gone into education or innovation, uh, what could have been done? And so I think that um, it, it's a little bit of an unfortunate situation there. But I think from Israel's perspective, I would do my best to move the people out and then clean it up. But I, I don't think that Israel... Uh, has stated that they don't want the people to move back there afterwards. You know, you you saw uh, uh, Tom Friedman's column on Tuesday uh, about, uh, 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 you know, where he put forward a plan to get out of this. Biden should recognize the Palestinian Authority unilaterally as a state, and MBS should go to Jerusalem like Egyptian President Anwar Sadat did in 1977, and he should say, I'll normalize with Israel, I'll recognize West Jerusalem as your capital, and I'll even pay to rebuild Gaza if you recognize a Palestinian state with East Jerusalem as its capital. What do you think? Good idea? No, I, I don't think that's a good idea. I think that there's certain elements of it that are correct. I, I think proactively recognizing a Palestinian state would essentially be rewarding an act of terror that was perpetrated into Israel. So it's, it's a super bad idea in that regard. Yeah, that is. Um, so when he says when wars happen, borders change, right? Just borders change, a.k.a. just saying well, Israel's going to take more territory. Don't worry about it. Um, I also found the fact that he said, oh, they'll just clean it up like a cleanse, like an ethnic cleanse, something to that effect before moving them into the desert um, when he's speaking about that there. It just really is this slumlord psychopath who uh, was uh, responsible for his units basically being so dilapidated that it caused uh, immense problems and he had to pay a judgment in Baltimore. Um, he's a real estate heir. His father went to jail for some of his own malpractices, uh, but he grew up incredibly wealthy within the real estate business, so much so that ben Benjamin Netanyahu stayed in his childhood home when he was growing up. So he understands and has been a part of the Zionist project for quite a while and connects it inter... inter uh, he, he intersperses it with his real estate ambitions there. The waterfront property, it's now been talked about before. Gaza's beaches, wow, look how beautiful they are. They're actually really a part of historic Israel. And this is what we should take here. Make a beachfront community upon uh, the, 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 these corpses. Um, of course it could be valuable. That's a big part of the motivation here. It's just not usually said out loud. So the fact that this complete Nepo baby created this chaos in part due to his insistence on the Abraham Accords and then has the gall to sit at his alma mater, Harvard University, which just fired its first black president due to uh, smears from the right related to this and has been not standing up for the pro-Palestine students on their campus that are being doxxed. And he can say that so casually with no backlash in that audience there is just like deeply disturbing and you can just see if trump wins in 2024 th he's gonna wait what a month before they begin to draw up plans for a trump casino and golf course on 
the on the shores of Gaza, it's 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 sociopathic. And um, yeah, I mean, I saw this. Uh, at least it's honest. Ahead. Yeah, at least it's honest. I just wanted to uh, also really quickly read this uh, uh, article or this paragraph that I saw the other day. Um, it was in uh, the the, uh, the White Review in um, a magazine from actually before October 7th in 2023 in May. I'll find the author in a second. But um, just to give people a sense, this is from uh, of, of what the construction of these kinds of cities um, and the development on Palestinian land really looks like. Tel Aviv, this is about Tel Aviv. But Tel Aviv serves as a coordinating point in a globally integrated imperial project with dizzying financial and demographic porousness. The money generated from the purchase of settlement feta cheese in Marina del Rey Costco helps to finance the dispossession ma machines of the Jordan Valley, where the Israeli dairy, dairy conglomerate Tanuva operates a food processing plant. Former Israeli soldiers recruited into New York private equity firms make tax-deductible contributions to the 501c3 designated charitable nonprofit Friends of the Israeli Defense Forces to support the army that protects their second homes. Laundered billions stream in from Zionist mining extraction in Guinea and the Democratic Republic of the Congo, where the mineral magnates flee to Israel to avoid international sanctions. This is the story of all colonialisms. Settlers build their tall, shiny things on the embers of the societies they torch, enlist the dispossessed into the production and maintenance, export the spoils, and bury their guilt in their families, splaying out on terraces, declaring themselves home at last. That is the exact operating mentality that Jared Kushner embodies there. And it's been the mentality and the driving force behind the continued expansion of Israel since its creation. Um, we'll we'll talk more about this obviously uh, later in the program. But you know the idea to this this notion that uh, if the money had not been spent on tunnels and could have been spent on innovation, when you've had Israel um, repeatedly, I mean you go back to two thousand eight, there were. Um, uh, airstrikes on Gaza's sewage and power plants. Um, you can't innovate if you can't even maintain your own water supply, your own sewage supply, your own power supply. Uh, because since, you know, uh, essentially 2008, uh, Israel will bomb any attempt to uh, build that. They and bombed so, all the universities. I don't know. Yeah, like, w What innovation is going to happen when you've destroyed all the universities? I mean, it's absurd. Hundreds of attacks on healthcare facilities, by the way, since October 7th as well. That, that's been revealed. And to give it credit. Well, I'm talking like, you know, but, but I'm also talking yes. like, you know, before October 7th became the latest excuse totally. for Israel to do these things. Yes. Um, so prior to that, it was some other excuse. And prior to that, it was some other excuse. And prior to that, it was some other excuse. Yep. Um, Just to so give on. credit really quickly, it, the piece is called Hating It Lush on Tel Aviv by Kaleem Hawa. I'd encourage people to read it.